Um, I'm calling the Simsbury Board of Education November 12th meeting to order. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for being here. Um, I will start with public audience. Mrs. Noble, state your name and your address. Uh, Chris Noble, 15 Fairchild, uh, I'm a long time, long time volunteer for Simsbury Community TV. My husband and I have been volunteering for over 25 years. And I have to admit, a lot of my time was in this room. Um, initially, I started with that two cameras with people. I was one of them. We'd stand for hours and watch these meetings and uh, record them. I have to admit, the Board of Education is not known for short meetings. <laughs> so we had some lengthy meetings. Well, many years passed, and pretty soon uh, better technology arrived. Therefore, Simsbury Community TV uh, spent over $40,000 to install the three robotic cameras that are in this room and the three robotic cameras that are downstairs in the main media room. And that uh, allowed us to record meetings with much better uh, picture quality, just amazing picture quality compared to the old cameras. Now, you might ask, how do we raise our funds? We're coming to the sticking point now. We rely on Simsbury residents. We rely on organizations inside of Simsbury. We rely on Comcast. We rely on Frontier. Now the situation is, every time someone signs up with Comcast, we get a few pennies each month from them. Uh, unfortunately, when they decide to <coughs> scrap cable, we lose money. And this is what's been happening. Cable subscribers are a jumping ship, and consequently, the innocent bystanders here that are getting hit. We still are doing the same thing, and you can always watch us on our website. We're always there if you don't have cable. So we are readily available. And what are we going to do about this? Because we are anticipating a deficit this year, which we can't obviously operate with the deficit. So we need community help. We need your help in every way that we can. We feel that we help you keep Simsbury in the know. Uh, the newspapers are uh, iffy. You can't really rely on them anymore. We have an opportunity here to help. And I'm going to be passing out our financial request for, to all of you. Some of you have already paid, and for that I am so grateful that you have donated to us already. But if you can't use the letter yourself, would you pass it on to someone? In the meantime, keep Simsbury in the know with Simsbury Community TV. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Noble, how many years did you spend teaching in the Simsbury District as well? 25. So that's something that everyone should know. You you are not leaving education. You've been in education a very long time. A very long home. time. Somebody might say get a life. Well, this is not. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, it's very important information. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, moving on to Board and Administrative Communications. Yes. So there's been a lot going on these past couple weeks. So at Latimer Lane, they held their annual Latimer Lane Halloween Parade and Dance on October 25th. For students dressed in amazing costumes and fun of the Halloween. Um, Friday afternoon, the second family tree meeting with um, and the school-wide assembly was held. Our, their family groups created family crests that were displayed in the cafeteria for the rest of the year. And these crests um, represented the members of each family unit and the things that are important to each of them. They um, hosted many of our veterans and their families starting with a breakfast at 8 o'clock this morning, followed by a recognition program starting at 8.30. And they appreciate all their veterans in, the school, um, in their school family and we're excited to honor them on this special day. At Tooten Hills, um, they had their annual fun run, which was designed to build community and camaraderie among students and staff. They hosted an election day bake sale on November 5th to raise money for the fifth grade trip to Camp Jewel. And they had a family, no, they will be having a family art night tomorrow night um, where families can come get to, uh, join together and enjoy a fun night of painting and decorating a family rock to put on display in the front of the school. They will be collecting for the turkey trot Monday 18th through Wednesday 20th. At Squadron Line, they have been busy 
Um, it's been a busy week for them where they've been um, hard at work preparing for their Veterans Day assembly today. Um, they look forward to spending time as a school community honoring the those who served in the armed forces to protect our freedom. At Central on October 25th, they began an exciting new effort um, called the Peaceful School Bus Program. This program helps to create uh, community and responsibility among students who share arrival and dismissal plans. Whether they ride the bus or walk to school, uh, they hope that this program will make all students' experiences coming to school um, and going home from school easier, safer, and more enjoyable. At Terrafield, there's uh, big congratulations to be had um, to the students who participated in the Creative Kids Sale. They raised $215 for the House of Bread. Um, on October 25th was Miss Sullivan's last day at Terrafield, and we wish her the best in her new position as math coach at Latimer Lane. And we are lucky, they say we are lucky to have Miss Erasmus as our new third grade teacher. At Henry James, um, they celebrated Unity Day, a nationally recognized day to focus on their anti bullying efforts. Students and staff dressed in orange, and every student had a, po uh, a post it on their locker with a positive message from a peer. Um, they also held their fall fest full of fun and games and all planned by the student council. For Veterans Day, students from Family Customer Science presented a student-made quilt to a Simsbury veteran. Um, announcements were made by students over the loudspeaker every period with information about veterans. Um, and veterans will be here on Wednesday and Thursday to tell students about their military experience. Um, HJMS will be collecting non-perishable donations from November 2nd to the 19th and students have been bringing in lots of um, items to the main office for donation. Their students have been encouraged to enter the Peace Poster Contest sponsored by the Lions Club with prizes of $25, $50, and $75 for the top three winners. And this past week, the Say Something Anonymous reporting system was introduced and launched at uh, Henry James. This program teaches students, teachers, and administra uh, administrators how to recognize the warning signs and signals, especially within social media, of individuals who may be a threat to themselves or others and say something to a trusted adult or use its anonymous reporting system. And finally, if all remains on schedule, they are on, they're getting close to their first move to the newly renovated space, which should take place just prior to Thanksgiving break and will involve the move of eight classrooms and many student lockers. Mm -hmm. Wow, lots of good you information. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Sharon? Um, so I'd like to report that I attended um, the PD last Friday Development Day. yes and um, it was my first one and I'm glad that I attended um, and I actually sat in on some of the classes so great it's experience stuff, right? yes excellent Brian uh, nothing to report Jen um, I just want to report that uh, I haven't forgot about you I apologize for not being at meetings but I've been uh, doing a lot of work on, on behalf of National School Board Association, especially in D.C. We've had board meetings, and as you know, a couple months pre-coming uh, pre to the elections, there was a lot of work for advocacy for, for um, different, uh, different constituents around the country in, in behalf of the education platforms that, that they were presenting. So, so that is over, so we're glad with that, and then we'll uh, start in January um, for, for the next uh, congressional session. But uh, I also attended the PD, and it was uh, it was really uh, um, enlightening to hear Commissioner Miguel Cardona speak to us um, regarding his platform for education and his work in, uh, in in equity throughout the state with with the districts. So um, it's always uh, it's always enjoyable to hear him. And uh, moving forward, he will be coming to our Cape Caps convention this uh, this Friday and Saturday. As you know, we have it every year, and we have the delegate assembly on Thursday, which so which will be. Um, convening to uh, to vote on the proposed resolutions that we will take forward to our own Connecticut uh, legislature come come February and uh, so the kickoff will be Friday morning and uh, Commissioner Cardona will be there we also have uh, Derek Gay is one of our speakers so we've got about 700 attendees attending so lots of good speakers good sessions um, both Friday and and Saturday so um, so I'm hoping I know Susan's planning and coming and I didn't know if you were planning to yes. also so it will be uh, will be uh, will be uh, a very uh, informative 
you know, long, long conference, but good. So on the other hand, I'd like to also just put in a, uh, a little advertisement here. On Monday, there will be the Promise to Jordan event at Simsbury High School Monday afternoon. And uh, this is a really important uh, event and, and for not only our students, but also for the community. And this is an event with um, making the understanding for substance abuse disorders within our community. And uh, so this is the first time this is being held. It's a post project there will also be food trucks and and, uh, and and music there but the important thing is is what the promise to Jordan and I am on that committee is is to make awareness of what is going on within our community and uh, not only in the school communities but also in the community as as uh, as a whole so it's an advocacy for this issue it's open to anyone it is free let's hope the weather um, Haves and, and uh, will, will be good for us and uh, we have the um, the backing of, of school administration thank you mr. Curtis and yeah, no and I also think we have some groups youth groups coming in from Canton I heard <coughs> in other towns as yes well. so yes it so it's be, open to all well attended yes it's <laughs> open to all yeah. the all the other high schools and and uh, what so is it like? so this is um, 130 to 4 30 and uh, the premise for this was uh, Lisa Gray who is uh, uh, chairman of uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce um, ED. So she lost her son a few years ago, uh, Jordan, this is the name of it, um, to substance abuse. And it is something that she has been very prolific and, and, and very um, strong about uh, the awareness and the advocacy and what is going on. So um, we, the committee, has been, wor been working very diligently on promoting this. And, and uh, as I say, it's open to anyone. It's for a few hours on Monday. We hope that they come and they understand what is, um, what is, what is happening within our community, not just here, but around the, the around the country. So that's for Monday. And, at Simsbury uh, High School. At Simsbury High School. Thank you, Tara. So hope to uh, see you all there and, and hope we have a very good turnout and a very meaningful event. And, and uh, hopefully it may continue as a as an annual event for, for, for our community. Thank you. Thank you. That's a lot, Lydia. You, are you competing with Kayla over there? Never. Never. You always have the floor. Always. How's that? Sue? I'm good, thanks. Just, just real quickly, just to commend Squadron Line for the uh, assemblies they had for Veterans Day yesterday. It was a, a, <coughs> an amazing, amazing show. I, they're, plus, I've, as big as that parking lot was, it was overflowing, parking on the streets. What, it was an amazing turnout, so just to commend them on that event. And just secondly, I just, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't second what Kayla said about the turkey trot. Jack Bannon was my sixth grade teacher at Squadron, oh, wow. so I have a personal connection to this, and wow. just an amazing yeah. member, yeah. and what a way to honor him with his commitment to service than to help out on the turkey trot. So just encourage the community and everybody to, to get engaged in that one as well. Excellent. Mrs. Hummer, Great, just wanted to share with the board that this Thursday will be our next Equity Council meeting from okay. 5 to 7.30 p.m. We're having a location switched from this room to Simsbury High School. Um, so that's exciting. And we'll be providing the board with an equity update during our first meeting in December. Great. Well, thank Kayla for mentioning the Say Something Anonymous reporting system that we presented to the board earlier this fall. Um, the middle school launch was highly successful last week. Scott Baker and Anne Jeanette Belmonte did a fabulous job presenting it to the students. I was able to attend all those sessions. We decided to go with kind of a rolling launch. So um, Wednesday and Thursday of this week, they'll do ninth and 10th grade at Simsbury High School. And then next week, it'll be 11th and 12th grade. So by the time we're together again, um, the whole program will be fully launched. And we're um, excited to, to get it going. We've been talking about it for a little while now. I would just like to echo all of the celebrations for the veterans. It's We've been in school for a number of years now, and the opportunity for teachers to engage students in conversations um, about this topic has just been outstanding. So I'm glad to know that you were able to witness you know one of those as well the other uh, everybody's talked about a little bit the professional development that we had last Tuesday um, this was the brochure that was made and given to all of the teachers with the description of 51 presentations that were offered for teachers we had over 75 of our teachers uh, present to their colleagues on Tuesday it was outstanding uh, Neil and I pretty much went around and checked every one of them out and um, the engagement and the, the, the presence of people at all of the, the presentations was really, really quite 
um, beautiful to see. Um, so the afternoon was a professional learning opportunity that teachers designed themselves and I had a number of people that stopped me or emailed me and said thank you for the afternoon. I've never had an afternoon like that available for us or me to really work on something um, that we felt was really important at this point in time. So it turned out to be a, a pretty productive day overall. So <coughs> fabulous. Mr. Cruz. Yes, one thing in your folders as well is a copy of the budget calendar. And that outlines key dates and key presentations um, and audiences. Um, we are well underway with um, school-based budgets uh, being due in the next week or so. And we'll start gathering that information uh, and analyzing our fixed costs. But it really will kick off with our three board meeting. We're still working on that date. It's either the 3rd or 5th of December. Um, but conversation is well underway and we'll get that process up and running uh, before too long. Great. Thank you very much. And again, thank you to Mrs. Noble for speaking out on SCTV because I think it's really important. We don't always have a great audience here, but I hear from people at the supermarket that they're watching it at home. And, <laughs> and I think um, if, it, if SCTV wasn't here, it'd be a lot more difficult to know what's going on. And it's important for us to know that you know as a public, the public knows what we're doing here and can participate anytime they feel that they'd like to. Um, moving on, approval of minutes for the October 22nd meeting. Second. Second. Thank you very much. All any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. 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 Great. Two abstentions. Um, now we're moving on to the approval of the collective bargaining unit agreement between the Simsbury Board of Education and the Simsbury School Administrators and Supervisors. Okay, I'll take that. Um, so I lead the Personnel Negotiations Committee, and. We're going to go over two of the uh, two of the negotiations tonight that we uh, completed this year. The first one is the uh, it's SASA, it's Simsbury School Administrators and Supervisors Association. These are the, the school principals and administrators. Um, a lot of time goes into goes into these negotiations. Uh, Scott Baker kind of led the the administrators and. Um, Neil and Burke on, on our side do a, a, most of the heavy lifting. A, a lot of work uh, by by everybody. Um, in uh, in the package, everybody's got the details. I'll just kind of give some of the highlights. We've uh, we've actually moved to a. This is going to be a four-year contract this year, and uh, I think what's important for everybody to know is that this was a negotiated settlement. So discussions back and forth between the board and the administrators and we didn't have to go to mediation. We, we came to an agreement before we got to that part. Um, so it was a very, uh, it was a very tidy process. Four years uh, duration with a general wage of two and a quarter percent each year in, in those four years, uh, just about at the, at the state average. Uh, a lot of other discussions with um, some language and uh, spent a lot of time looking at uh, uh, pharmaceutical costs savings that was a uh, kind of a, a theme across all of the negotiations this year um, I think there's any other details I think that uh, that really is is the high level um, and if anyone wants to add anything anything else um, I guess I, I also need to need to thank uh, on our side that the whole committee is, uh, is, is Jeff and Sue and Brian and myself uh, a lot of work between the two, and I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to the, the SEA. But um, this was still, it's, it's time, and uh, multiple meetings, so it's, uh, time is probably people's most precious commodity. So that's, um, I thank everybody for, for all of their help on this. So I'm going to move. Well, does anyone have any questions or thoughts? Um, there you go. Go okay. for it. All right, so I'm going to move that the Board of Education ratify the proposed changes in the collective bargaining agreement between the Simsbury Board of Education and the Simsbury School Administrators and Supervisors Association for the period of July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2024. Okay. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. We've got the best in the business. I'm glad we found it. We've, we've got a good contract. Yes, yes. 
Uh, can just go right into the next. Please. Yeah. The next item is the um, the Simsbury Education Association. This is our biggest uh, collective bargaining group. These are the teachers, and uh, you know, again, I, I want to thank Neil and Burke and and our team. Uh, a lot of time, a lot of meetings spent on on this this uh, contract in particular. Uh, I also want to um, really thank the the representatives on the teacher side. Um, Kara Masler, Keith Berthium, Jamie Sipa, Brian Foreman. Uh, the, the, the passion and the, the stewardship that they present for their group, mm -hmm. um, everyone should be very proud of the representation that they, uh, that they bring to the table. Uh, I know it was, uh, it, it, it's very obvious when you're going and you're talking about, about these things. It's, um, they're in good hands and uh, it, was a, it was a very good process. And, and a lot of time, a lot of discussion. <laughs> um, but um, where we ended up uh, on, on the wages, this is, uh, we're, we're staying with a three-year agreement on, on this agreement. Uh, for each year, we have a 1.75 increase for the, the maximum, the top step, and 0.5 for each step below that. Uh, what that comes out to is a 9.99% is a increase uh, cumulatively over the three years, which is above the state average, and it's um, it's it puts us in the right place, uh, puts our, our teachers in the right place for our um, for our peers. It moves us in the right direction. As with um, as with the administrators, we uh, we spent time on on the, the pharmaceutical cost savings, and you know, there are. Uh, um, a lot of other, um, a lot of other things in the in the contract that um, uh, some some language, some you know uh, payments. You know when uh, when teachers cover for other teachers, there's uh, there are um, stipends for that. So all of these things um, were discussed and, and and decided upon and agreed upon, and uh, I think it was a it was a good process. Long process, but I, I, I think we're, everybody was uh, was pleased. So unless anybody has anyone have any questions, questions or thoughts, uh, I just, can I just say uh, as as Todd mentioned, a big thanks to Neil questions. and Burke for all the time and effort that they put into this. The material they provided us to these <coughs> discussions was incredibly helpful, um, and, and I think we reached a fair deal for both sides. And obviously, Todd, greatly appreciate your leadership on all this. You, you represented us well. So thank I think everybody you. did a thank thank you great you. job. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, in that case. I, Tara, if you don't mind, I, I would like to add just I think Please the public do. should know that um, we are also <laughs> advised by Shipman and Goodwin in um, negotiating these contracts. I mean, especially with the SEA contract, it's by far the biggest driver of our budget. It's um, important in terms of the financial health of the district and, you know, to have that professional assistance while we guide that um, is important and uh, th it's another place where we're represented by the best um, where Tom Mooney comes in and assists us with the teachers um, negotiation um, it's another partner that's now helping us with the um, administrators but they're um, they're both excellent and it's a so I appreciate that people are thanking me and Burke but we also have some assistance from the the professionals at Shipman and Goodwin mm -hmm. thank you very much good point I will. I will. I'll move that the Board of Education ratify the proposed changes in the collective bargaining agreement between the Simsbury Board of Education and the Simsbury Education <coughs> Association for the period July 1, 2020 <coughs> through June 30, 2023. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> And thank you all very much for the amount of time, the hours that these volunteers sitting here and the, and the teachers and the administrators and everyone who was involved. It was hours and hours of hard work and, and they were respectful and thoughtful and caring of each other. And it was, it's really impressive. It, it gets you to really appreciate our team and our district and our teachers and the, how everyone can work together. We really appreciate it. Moving on, um, do, 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 so, we are going to be having a tri-board meeting, budget prep meeting, with which will be the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, and our Board of Education. Um, so we are going to cancel the November 26th Board of Education meeting. I would like to recommend 
we, we canceled the board, <laughs> the board meeting on the 26th. Um, it's also, we're getting into Thanksgiving and it's a busy time for everyone. So if that is of interest to all of you, I would accept a motion. I'll make the motion. <laughs> Cancel. The November 26th meeting. November 26th meeting. meeting. Excellent. Anyone would like to second that? Thank you, Jen. All those in favor? It's not that we're one meeting less because we still have a tri board meeting, but it does help. The following week. Though. The following week. The following week. Yeah. I don't want to be here. Okay, so we're good. Um, now we're moving on to. Um, you guys can our wake guests. up. You guys can wake up. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about all our hard, our homework, but um, it's very nice for you to come back. Facilities Enrollment Task Force. Yes. I'll send it off. Thank you, Tara. So I want to welcome. Uh, Eddie and uh, Jeff are back from Tecton. It's their second presentation to the board. And I thought I would just kind of set the stage for those people listening at home and kind of reframe where we are as a board in terms of this overall kind of large scale process that we've been involved with. So I'm going to go way back for a minute to when uh, the town really committed a significant <coughs> financial resource uh, to go out uh, in search for a, an architectural firm that could help us really with three major things I've said all along there's three parts to this study uh, the first being a real assessment of our current conditions um, we engaged in that work last year we reported that work out to the Board of Ed we reported that work out to the facilities and enrollment task force and we held the public forum uh, relative to that and we produced a document that is very significant that will help to feed our capital improvement plan um, for the next 10 to 15 years in terms of identifying priorities. Uh, the second piece of that ran hand in hand, and that was a real deep dive with the new company, uh, Malone and McBroom, into looking at our demography uh, and recognizing some of the shifting trends we're seeing uh, in our population and starting to see how enrollment has now flattened out and is going to start to significantly grow at the elementary level again. And the third piece is where we sit right now, and that is to start to look at alternate configurations, different options and ideas uh, for the numbers of our school buildings, the uh, grade level configurations with the goal in mind of creating a 10 to 15 year master facilities plan. So we again, we've had several meetings with the facilities uh, task force to go over these options, several meetings with our administrative council, as we call, call it, to come up with our best thinking to this point. We wanted to share that with the Board of Ed this evening. Obviously, no decisions are final. It's our thinking of the group to this point as we prepare to share our thinking at a public forum next week, the 20th. Um, I would just explain the um, Facility Enrollment Task Force. Can we do a little history on why, where that, who's on it and how long it's been in existence? Sure. Sure, that, that's a, uh, a group that's been in existence for close to a decade now, actually. I've been superintendent eight years. It's a group I uh, started working with initially when I came in. It was tasked to respond to the enrollment trends at the time and start to look at different solutions uh, relative. We had modulars that we removed and came up with, uh, with plans. So it's a group that represents staff, administration, and community members, as well as board members. Um, Board of Finance is represented on that as well. So it's, it's a collaborative group uh, with vested interests in, in the work that we're doing. Um, and they've been really productive in helping us and pushing our thinking uh, so far. And um, Great, thank you. Give you the rundown. OK, so that's kind of setting the stage. I think I kind of talked through your first couple slides. Oh, I apologize for that. That's all right. <laughs> but I will kick it to you guys. I all appreciate right. you being here. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Matt. My name's uh, Jeff Wazinski, principal at Tecton Architects. Eddie and I will kind of walk you through. It's kind of a brief overview. Um, we handed out um, printed copies because we made some um, adjustments as, uh, throughout the day as we were refining some of the information. But uh, tonight, uh, we're really going to summarize the goals, uh, the why, basically, uh, go over some of the project history in our process, and then really focus most of our time on outlining the options. The kind of discuss the, the summary of options that we've considered, the, the process that we went through to kind of refine them, um, you know, the present thinking, the best the best thinking to date, um, the key objectives of, of the options so we can highlight those, um, and then solicit feedback and comments um, in preparation for, for next week's public forum. So you've seen this slide before, but we were asked about a year ago, almost now, to um, 
look at the three major categories that Matt outlined, but um, analyzing the existing conditions and assessments, which we have, the 10 to 15 year priori prioritized capital plan. Um, we're looking through uh, the uh, reconfiguration and options, and we've already completed the demographics. So the ultimate goal is a long range plan for the community, and it's a plan. So project history, we're gonna fly through this fairly quickly mentioned we started uh, really early in 2000 of this year 2019 or late last year and worked on the existing conditions all the way through to demographics we've developed options a series of options all throughout the summer and in, into fall and we're basically at this moment right now to review these options and discuss them as a community to see what what makes sense and what so key points from the first forum um, just wanted to highlight that um, obviously, demographics uh, were part of it, and uh, the housing development was analyzed in great detail. I'm not going to go over all that, but key takeaways, um, you're looking at somewhere around 300 plus um, student increase uh, over the next five years in the K to six um, grade categories. And the fastest growth is at Latimer, uh, Squadron, and Central. So you can see the percentages there. This is the birth hotspots that kind of just reinforces that finding um, that Patrick had presented at the first public forum. I thought this was a helpful graphic to kind of just see. Obviously, the red is the most intense, and you can see where it falls on the town. They, what's important is the information that we utilized for the options or the creation and development of the options is we utilized uh, the projections based on the mid medium range, right? So it wasn't the high low, but it was right in the mi middle. This is a graphic from um, Malone and McBroom that again illustrates the detail of the enrollment increase in each of the elementary schools, which is actually very important when we start considering the options. Other pieces that we, we um, key takeaways from the first forum is um, basically in all the elementary schools that no, none of them have been um, received a comprehensive renovation um, during their lifespan. Are you get, you're not getting the presentation? Okay, sorry. Okay, so the facilities um, have certainly been well maintained and you know the community has received um, solid value on their investment, um, which I think is a key takeaway, a key piece from our existing conditions assessment. And then obviously most of the need that we found is in the elementary schools. So we're kind of just setting it up. These are some of the key graphics that you find in that large book that Matt had mentioned on the existing conditions. Um, other pieces um, and elements from our first findings on the existing conditions, really, the facilities, with exception to Squadron in the elementary schools, the facilities have been added to modified multiple times during their lifespan, which has led to what, what we find or we found um, inefficient layouts. And we'll show you a graphic that kind of relates to that and, and the impact that it has not only on the building, but on the educational space as well. And then the core facilities, uh, meaning bathrooms, cafeterias, gym Cafetoriums or cafetoriums, <laughs> kitchens, they all need to be addressed. And we hit that pretty hard in the first um, ex uh, public forum, but just wanted to re reiterate that. This graphic, don't want to go into it, it's a vintage plan, but this just further illustrates that um, the elementary schools have been added to in multiple years, multiple vintages, which makes it awfully difficult to, to assess, but also to renovate. And here's the key graphic that um, we did on one school anyway, Latimer, where um, when you measure the overall building footprint compared to the blue area there, which is the what we call the circulation factor, the efficiency factor, when you measure the gray to the blue, you end up with about a 40% um, relationship, right? A 40% blue to gray overall growth square footage. So that's the efficiency factor in this building. And as a net result of adding to this building over time and the circuitous circulation, a typical building you would expect around 25 to 30 percent. So what, what does that mean? What it means is you're, you're, if you were to measure it to an efficiently laid out newer building or renovated building, you're losing out about 4,800 to 7,300 square feet of educational space. So it's real, real space that you're, you're missing because of some of these inefficiencies in the buildings that are found. So 
Other key points, um, we mentioned comprehensive renovations. Uh, no facility has seen it. Um, programmatically, um, really using every space possible in the buildings. And I thought this was an interesting um, statistic that if you take the average age of the original elementary schools, the total is about 74.4 years old. So getting up there in age. Can I ask you a question about that efficiency factor? Sure. The, the average efficiency factor is 25 to 30. Is that for a school building? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. We typically find anywhere between, yeah, in that range for a school building. Yep. And the blue is, are those just the corridors or that's yeah. obviously more? Corridors, than toilets, um, some of the mechanical okay, space um, is typically what you do. Um, some take in like wall thicknesses, but for this kind of metric, we, we took circulation in those kind of service areas is what we yeah. call it. So. Sure. I am Eddie Wadowski, project manager with Tecton. <clears throat> this is the button of down. Okay, good. Uh, so this really kind of just reinforces a little bit some of what Jeff was talking about. This is a summary of all of the existing schools. Again, you see the year built, uh, the myriad of additions that were done over the years, with the exception of Squadron Line. You see a pretty wide variety in terms of size and accommodations of each of the buildings. There's a slide that Jeff will talk to you a little bit later on, which talks about um, in terms of if you compare the population of the school against the state standards that the schools actually, even though they feel tight, you're actually, according to them, you're over what you have um, for the number of students. And it's because of that efficiency factor. So. Some more points that we heard at the first forum, again, that uh, most of the existing conditions that we brought up and, and presented, they weren't a surprise to anybody. People knew what the issues were at each of the schools. We heard the sustainability is a, definitely a very important uh, subject, and we want to make sure that we incorporate that into any new designs going forward. And again, that schools are being, you're doing the best with what you have here. Uh, going forward, spaces need to be flexible, not oversized, that we need to research trends done in the region nationally uh, to make sure that we're um, basically benchmarking against them. Uh, site schemes need to be secure, making sure that everybody is accessible, uh, past to and from and around inside the building. No preconceived ideas that really everything's on the table. We don't want to go in uh, with any preconceived notions, really. And that we have to be fiscally responsible, of course. So. Uh, we've had quite a few meetings, as uh, Matt mentioned, really with the uh, Enrollment Task Force and with leadership and the Administrative Council. We'll just kind of take you through these. We really started in back in, uh, in June, and we started off with five different options of how we might take a look at uh, the schools. We added a sixth one. As we got into August, we had a couple that we lost uh, that just didn't seem to really make much sense to anybody. We picked up... Um, couple others as we went. Essentially, I'm trying to get you to understand we're only going to show you really two options tonight with one variant of one of the two options. But we have explored quite a few to date. And what you're seeing, as Jeff alluded to, really is kind of the best and brightest. It's what we think is, makes the most sense of everything we've studied. So <coughs> the next series of slides are, are going to illustrate um, a few things. The capacity of the existing buildings as it's measured to the existing state standard. And that's an important kind of metric to understand when you're when you're looking at utilization, but also the population increase at the elementary schools. So the way that we do it is we first take the highest enrollment um, in an eight-year period, which is we'll take that information from the Malone McBroom study, which we have. And we're going to multiply that by the maximum allowable uh, state square footage by the state. And there's a metric there. I don't expect you to read it, but it's you know a certain size building, a certain grade level. You get this amount of square footage per student. And then you can you obviously multiply it, and then you look at that square footage, which is the maximum allowable, and compare it to the existing building as a start point. So in this particular example in Latimer, um, the Maximum allowable, if you do that math, is about 64,000, 64,488, 645. And the existing building's 45,000. So the delta, what that means is that 
if you were to build, add, or renovate the school, you could build for, for the projected enrollment, you could build a building about 64,500 square feet. And what you have today is 45,000 square feet. So you need to, if you were to reutilize the building, you would need to expand it by 40%. So that's a bit of a challenge when it comes to studying the core um, core of the buildings, meaning the, the size of the cafeteria, the size of the kitchen, the size of the gym. So those are some of the, the challenges that we kind of worked through when we were evaluating the options. So what we did is we took each of the elementary schools and did that math. And it changed slightly since some of the, some of the um, last or previous presentations and workshops, only because what we wanted to do is compare it to the highest enrollment so what we added some nomenclature there. So, so we just went through Latimer, but it's the same math all the way through for each of the schools. So four out of the five, when you're comparing it to a simple metric like how much will the state allow you to build, you're, you're under, under that square footage, okay? So that, that's kind of leading up to some of, the, some of the challenges that we were working through when we were evaluating the options. The other piece is you know, when, when are the numbers going to start affecting your community? And again, this is information that was extracted from uh, the demographic study, but we circled Latimer, Squadron, and Central uh, for this particular example, circled it and put it, basically this, this shows the school year and the projection and the delta, as you move to the right, the delta between what you have today and what's projected. And to simplify it, in three years across the, the elementary schools, there's going to be an additional around 166 students, right? So give or take 10, 10, 15. That means eight to nine classrooms are going to be needed in, in three years. And in four years, you're going to have 200 plus, so you're going to need somewhere around 10 to 11. So just, again, further illustrating some of the, some of the what the data is telling you, basically, in the study. So some of the key aspects, and, and Eddie and I will both kind of hit this one, and then Eddie will drill into some of the details of the two options. Some of the key aspects, and we've learned from, from other studies, from other communities that are doing other studies that are either at the beginning or at the end or at the middle phases, where you really want to future-proof your plan. This is a plan, right? This is not set in stone. It's a plan, and it should be a living document that, that builds in flexibility. And that was one of the key items that we heard during all of our workshops so we just wanted to, to reinforce it in bold and and really what you want to do is start look at options that free up space in the existing elementary schools some redistricting is most likely going to be possible regardless of the options so you know there were there's no real favoritism to one site or another it, it the numbers are what they are and you're going to have to move them around um, really what you want to do is create some space for improved curriculum because there's we've illustrated there's no real room to move i encourage you to walk through one of the elementary schools they're, they're using every every space so if we could do that in an option that'd be great and really strategically address those needs you know holistically but also the immediate needs in that plan so that's where the options will overlay with the capital improvement plan for things like okay if you're not going to get to a certain building for 10 or 15 years you know you need to do a roof or you need to do a boiler so you'll have a strategic plan um, both pieces uh, merged together so okay, okay. <clears throat> so this is the first of the two options uh, we'll show you this evening and step one is to create a new school fifth and sixth grade a lower middle academy if you will on the site at Henry James Middle School um, this basically allows by pulling fifth and sixth grade out of the existing elementary schools it's two grades worth of space that you're creating so the rest of the elementary schools would go to K to four uh, we're looking at Terrafil potentially is going to a pre-k and board of ed space just looking at you know again it's nothing against Terrafil we're hopefully trying to keep it in circulation but the numbers are declining and so it, it seemed like a likely target um, step two is to basically and we're not going to show you plans for these but we've done them we can show them to you if, if you need to see them uh, it's to add or renovate or rebuild 
three elementary schools and repurpose Tooten Hill is one option, or the other option is to rebuild or renovate all of four elementary schools. And you can see the kind of the key difference between the two is um, take a look at that column second to the right on both versions where it says future enrollment. Uh, you can see that the second option of this scheme basically allows you to normalize and make the population a little more standard at all of the elementary schools. Option two is instead of aligning 5, 6, and 7, 8, it's to add on to Henry James to move one grade out, so just the sixth grade with the elementary schools um, staying at K to 5. And in this one, we did take a look at similarly to the previous one where we looked at either three um, schools or four, but it didn't make sense to look at three because the populations were so large because we were only one, moving one grade out. So a uh, little bit of some of the, you know, the key differences between the two. Um, first time you've probably seen some of the costs associated with them. Um, so essentially, it's, it's a little bit of a summary telling you how many students, how much area is involved. And this is for step one of the project. This is not dealing with the renovations to the subsequent elementary schools. This is what you're going to get, you know, the, the first project we really need to do. Main points here I'm missing? Uh, no. So, well, just to touch on the cost. So. Yep in a holistic terms. So what we used for, for costing it, um, is kind of an average, kind of industry average for new construction, for renovators new construction, and then for site costs. So you have some major components. You have the site and building, which are basically the hard costs um, in this, in this uh, graphic on, on both option one and two. And then you have what's, what's called soft costs, which are all the other related project costs, meaning uh, furniture, uh, computers, wiring, networking, everything, take a building, flip it upside down, shake it out, everything that comes out, that's kind of soft costs. Um, and then you combine those two together and that gives you total project costs. So whenever we show the communities or communities or Simsbury, your, the, the dollars, we're going to always talk about total project costs because that, pick a number, if it's 56, 50, 45, 80, total project costs is what it it takes to deliver the project and then what you do is you take the state reimbursement and there's a difference in renovate is new and new between last published was 24.64 they haven't published strategically the new ones yet but um, so we, you take that and you multiply it and you get that's the state reimbursement so on the left side you'll get about a 14 14 million dollar cost back from the state we carried some kind of ineligibles because there's portions that the state says that they may not reimburse. So we have a percentage there that we've seen as a common. And then you have the yellow, which is the, the total cost to, to Simsbury. So all options and metrics, everything that we studied was, was apples to apples a comparison. Um, and then once we start drilling down deeper into the options, we'll start comparing some of the more, you know, other metrics related to projects. But that's kind of how these were how these were set up. And one of the things I think it's interesting is I don't want to ever try to convince you that five or four million dollars is not an insignificant sum because it isn't. But the point is, is that as we looked at all of the various options percentage wise, the schemes were all fairly common and fairly similar in terms of their cost. And that was a really nice thing. We thought it because it allowed us to really start to look at holistically what's best and not really let the cost drive it. It's really what works best for the community. Jeff, can you speak to, just go back for a second, because sure. I think it's important in how we evolved, or the conversation at least evolved with option two of joining two projects in phase yeah. one, yeah. right? That mm -hmm. it's about swing space and about breathing room. So yep. um, maybe talk a little bit about that for people that are listening at home. And, and sure. So originally we, actually, we had that sixth grade wing standing on it on its own and then another phase down the road would have been to address Latimer yep yeah we actually get there in a couple slides if uh, oh okay I think sorry Eddie no no it's fine <laughs> <laughs> hey I didn't say it I would have well basically in, in general terms option one buys you more more time 
right? Because it's gonna free up about 600 plus students all in one project. Whereas if you just add the sixth to the middle school, you're only freeing up half as much. So the reason why we coupled them together is because you're going to start to need to build another new on, on a, an existing site so that you have if you implement this plan in, in a strategic way, you have swing space in order to move students around without having to, to buy modulars or do some kind of, um, I, I think, inefficient phasing. So that's that's the kind of basic reasons. And then we have some others to show you. And Latimer was the one we chose because that one was the greatest difference in student population. Absolutely. Yep. And the condition was... And the condition, and, and, right. Okay, so next slide. Okay, so a little bit of visualization what this might look like with the new 56th grade academy at Henry James. Um, we had originally looked at taking, having the building really more towards the north and, and more of a standalone uh, sort of concept, but the feedback we heard was people wanted to see a little bit more of an alignment of the two schools and have them actually potentially sharing resources. Not sharing resources in the sense that students would go eat lunch in the other building. They're going to be separate, standalone, self-operating facilities. But the concept was, instead of having students come to a campus in an environment for two years or four years to really be able to kind of, you know, get, get a process together and, and, and have a, some sense of continuity, so to be able to have students have shared experiences, maybe there's a class that's taught in one building that the others can go to, or maybe sh teachers are, you know, sharing concepts and ideas. So we're not sure exactly what that connection might look like. It could be an enclosed piece, it could be a covered walkway, but just having the buildings essentially near enough to each other and you know, circulation essentially shared uh, bus and parent drop off around the site and still plenty of space to have the fields and play areas uh, that are needed. Yeah, so this is purely test fit, showing you what a somewhat like a 100,000 square foot two-story building would look like on the site. So it's nothing more, don't feel connected to it. It's nothing more than just showing that, it can, it it, that it's possible, yeah. it could fit. It, it attempts to address some of the issues or concerns we had relative to the this option we heard about traffic trying to get queue yep. lanes off try to get bus bus um bus and parent separation so we tried to graphically in a diagram kind of show you that what's possible so that's what the intent is here yeah originally i think there were more curb cuts and you yep. know and as to just point the long roads that you see are trying to allow stacking and queuing space on the site to pull traffic off of the street Okay, a slight variant here. Now, this is option two. This is if we were going to add on to Henry James, the sixth grade edition. You see in yellow a couple of spaces uh, that would be added on to. Similarly, trying to address making sure that there's queuing space on the site, uh, pulling traffic off the road. And what we'd be looking at here is uh, the areas in purple, essentially, the classrooms would be short by adding on to the sixth grade are adding the sixth grade on here and then you see on the left there expanding the cafeteria there's potentially some other spaces things like some of the specials art and music and things like that that might potentially also need to be added on to as well uh, besides just the core curriculum so yeah this is so hopefully we'll answer your question there a little bit back um, essentially the the big difference between the two uh, schemes is really the amount of swing space that it uh, generates for you in terms of flexibility of the existing schools. And it's pretty simple math. It's just moving one grade out versus moving two grades out. And so, you know, essentially you're, you know, you're getting 640 students swing space in option one, 316 in option two. Uh, plans and, and we'll get into the schedule in just a second but you know if we're looking at four or five years from now which is conceivably when the first project would be constructed open for accepting students you're going to need about a space for another 240. And how long would you see them needing swing space? Basically going forward. It, I, I guess it long term it depends on on uh, how many you well in these options so yeah. you've got that figured for how long the construction will take which would be if if that 
So if they're doing the Henry James in a lot of goes in at the long, same time. Right. How long do they how stay long does in the that old take? building? Oh, probably 18 to 24 months, yeah. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Like yeah. That. I, right, is that so it'll be within one school year? Yeah, or yeah, a school right. year and a half. A year and a half. Probably. Two to three I'm slides. thinking for the when we go to the forum, sure. another slide with the Latimer site plan to demonstrate Absolutely. for option two mm -hmm. yep. that you're going to build on that same yeah. Okay. yeah. site. Right, because we you did I mean? cover you, that in more detail in the working sessions. Yep. But yep. Right. It, it brings to life what that sweet yeah. space means, right? Right. The, okay. Visual. Okay. Yep. Well, and I think it's important because it shows the public that you can, mm -hmm. by building on what is essentially okay. The, the property, the property mm -hmm. um, it's not a disruption to the working right. environment. Right. That's right. Which like there's ways to do it at both Latimer and Squadron, and you have a Tutin model for that if that yeah. was done. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it What's is, really important about either option? Sorry, he had a question. The whole oh, swing sorry. space idea. I, I'm, I'm stuck. I don't know what pages, but uh, option one. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. So the reason, yeah, there you are. Mm -hmm. The reason that Tootin is not in step one is because it's being rebuilt. Is that? I'm getting confused about okay. step one and gotcha. step two and, and what, gotcha. what kind of happened. Okay, so both graphics mm -hmm. are for step one and step two. It's not the graphic on the left is not step one, and the graphic on the right is step two. Reason. That extra that makes me I know, confused. it's probably confusing <laughs> for So, step one is to construct the new school. Okay. Step two, there's two options. One is that you're going to keep three elementary schools at K-4. The other is there's going to be four elementary schools at K-4. So, two be... is only shown on the right because that's one of the two potential options. Okay. Them that you have here. It's just are phase not one. Anything phase one. about what's going to happen, whether it's three or four, or what construction has to be done to three or four, or any of that. Really. That is, is phase one phase one first Art first one. referendum, yeah. right? Yes. And and the yeah. thought on the three verse four, and and that was Jeff's point, I think, on flexibility with our enrollment and what people have seen in other communities, to lock in and say it's a definitive plan, say for three schools, you could get there and enrollment won't allow you to do that or you'll have to build in South Windsor what's happened the last of the four builds was supposed to be a 350 student school it is now a 680 mm. student school with enormous cost cost you know, yeah escalation. so we kind of learned from some of that and from some other communities because if you kind of go through a program you're going to not only you know see the population increase that was projected yeah. but may attract more so we kind of flipped the plan with a five six, if that if that's an option that's going to be selected, because it buys you time early on for the new arrivals, uh, and then also allows whether you want three or four elementary schools, the period of time between the first one and the second and third one is several years, typically. So it, it, it allows you to see kind of what the demographics let it play out a little bit and gives you flexibility to you know maybe maybe you don't build new on one and you just add reno and try to reduce some of the costs it, it gives you that flexibility to kind of a timeline uh, steer a little bit had, had further down right we have that time right. Right. So one we're saying, yeah we don't have to make that decision I have like a squadron that one version has 670 students and the other one has 400 students I mean, if you were to look at a school district that said, I've got a school that, that's 60% occupied, I mean, would you say, that's not efficient? I mean, what happened? I mean, if you've got, why, why would you why would you plan squadron to have only 400 You students? planned a, a rebuild. It would be a rebuild. Would, there's a rebuild on squadron years down the road in the plans. For, for Wait, both of those it, scenarios, that would not be a reuse of the existing squadron building. It would be building. Okay, so that's new. what the new. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. The last we column for that enrollment. Yes. 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 Uh, on that side. Yeah. I don't know what. Yeah. <coughs> so it's it's hard to think of this. I mean, it's a it's a lot of information. 
and it's a lot of change that we it we understand the reasons for it are because we know the the we hired these guys to understand what our buildings look like and where we need to improve them because they're they're tired right and uh we got to figure out what's our best plan long to make a long-term responsible plan that's best for our students best for our town and financially responsible so that's kind of our that's our mission it's just it's a lot to take in yeah. Let's, yeah. let's go over just a basic schedule on what could happen to put things in perspective okay. yep. so this is essentially project one in this case is essentially step one is what we're saying so it's either the construction of the new fifth and sixth grade at Henry James or it's the construction of the sixth grade addition at Henry James and a new school at Latimer so that's project one assuming about four and a half to five years is really kind of the gestation point of a project in terms of getting all the ducks in a row the submission to the state the grant application the time to design it the time to construct it if you're looking at you know the remaining three buildings or so you can see we're really it's it's pretty far distance out I mean we're talking about you know 15 to 20 years to really implement uh, the entire plan could some of that be shortened up a little bit to where you start you know submitting the grant application for one while you're in the midst of construction for the previous one sure you know it doesn't mean that you have to start you know the next one only when you finish the one before so it could be compressed a little bit in, in your scenario in that one it's a, so it's a roughly a 15 year that's 20. Uh, is 20. it 20? Yeah, that's, that's 20. Going out yeah. To and that's yeah. pretty yeah. Nice. No, no, that's I. As Tara said, this is the, there's a lot. It's a major construction. I think to do it in a methodical process like this is the is the smart way to do. It. Let's do it at one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So we say best case scenario. We're talking about not the ideal, but in terms of if you're really putting your foot to the pedal to the metal if we were to go ahead and say all right we figured out which one of these first steps we want to do we submit the application to the state uh, in time for the June 2020 so this coming June essentially you'd be occupied roughly about four years from now in 2023 in the fall so so this is kind of a, a average project timeline yep. for and then what what's the key dates that you want to keep in mind are yeah obviously you're going to go for grant application and state submission so those always happen before june right so if you miss june there isn't like a you know july it's you miss the whole year so it doesn't matter if it happens i mean this is aggressive it could be the next year it could be the following year the, the fact of the matter is is that once you submit that grant application and there's modifications because this community has been through it before so they know there's modifications where you may want to wait so when you submit a grant application you don't hear anything until December of the, the year until you're on a priority list then they send it to the legislators and then they vote for the grant application in the following uh, spring so not many communities but some communities <coughs> wait until they get that actual letter to start designing so that time frame could be six years so it varies between you know that four and a half to five and a half six but that's kind of a, a process for one and then you kind of if you overlap them or if you don't that's that's what why we want to give the community kind of a tool so that they can kind of slide these projects around and if you take try to address it the immediate needs or the immediate meaning the five you know within the five years needs with a first project then it that gives you that time to modify as you as you go so that's kind of the thought process as to how we landed where we did for right now it, but it's it's a it's just that it's a work in progress yep and then a variant of the schedule so well first of all this is four years from now basically looking at the demographics projections saying that we're really short about 166 spaces an alternate option is as Jeff said just a year out. 
it's just basically taking all the dates and sliding the year out. If you don't submit by this coming June, you'd really need to submit by the following June. So all it's really doing is it's the exact same timeline other than a different start date, and it pushes you out to 2024. Just so you understand the ramifications, so another year, now you're up to 203 students instead of 170, instead of 166. The other piece to know is that obviously, you know, inflation isn't going anywhere. So um, potentially, you know, we see typically about a 4% increase year to year. So that could be another, you know, million to million and a half on top of yeah. project costs by the delay. For those of you who haven't seen this before, because you're not on the facility enrollment task force, please ask your questions and bring stuff up, Brian. Yeah, yeah I just have a question on uh, <coughs> the slide that shows capacity of what you have today, where you break down like the various schools with current enrollment, future enrollment, and then the delta with the amount of uh, yep. shortfall in space, I guess, where Latimer shows 18,649 feet shortage. Yep. And I, I made this is for for someone like Neil, but my question is, current enrollment, say, for squadron is 580, and project, projected, projected 683 to nine years from now, or 10 years from now. What's the most we've had at, at squadron? I, I, I thought we used to have 700 and something kids yeah, there. Yeah, actually, into the 800s, but no, with a very 100. different use of space. Okay, so where, where something like, um, you used to only have to have half day kindergarten. Okay. So you could use half the number of kindergarten classrooms. Uh, the squadron line now contains the entire preschool program. Um, and so there was definitely more capacity at squadron, but the building was just used completely differently than it's than it is used now. Um, you know, your your special education spaces, especially ready, set, go uses um, three classrooms plus an OTPT room in that school. So and that used to be in a modular. I was so going to say that changed dramatically when we had the plan to remove the modulars. And I think it was 40,000 square feet of modular space we removed across all right. Every of school. our buildings. It's just because all we've been hearing is population has been going down, 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 down for, I don't know, eight, ten years, whatever that number is. And now for the first time ever or in the last ten years, it went up 18 kids or whatever that number was, 30 kids. And now obviously we're projecting an increase. And I'm just curious these future enrollment numbers, if those get us back to where we were 10 years ago in all the schools. They don't get you quite that far, but they get you, you know, maybe half midway, midway yeah. back toward that point. And you don't have the space you had. Okay, because we've lost a lot. Because we the, took away yeah. all the modulars. I think that's an important so point the, to make up the yeah. number of students that we held in modulars. And we can pull that are together no some. Yeah. We could yeah, pull I could, together I some really data good. Good. that's interesting to look at. Oh, about that. Ask that. I think that's a really important point. Everybody knows that the number of kids has gone down and down and down. And then if we try to sell them on, oh. Ten years from now, we're going to be back to almost where we used to be. We got it, you know. That but what I, what I would say to them though is re remember what they said and what we've been talking about from the outset. This is also about the building. Condition. Correct. Conditions. Correct. I agree one hundred percent with that. It's I do. It's, these things need to be renovated, and whether we're talking renovated, renovated to new or new, these these buildings have got to be gutted. <coughs> Basic <coughs> renovations, yeah. Not task force? Yes. Okay. See, but I think that's something that is something not on the social yeah. network that needs to be reiterated definitely at the public sure. hearing. And I think the, the why again. Yeah. 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 More. yeah. I think yeah. a little bit of, you know, that reality check mm -hmm. too is Latimer has been sitting on our capital improvement plan for how many years? Probably back when we had all those pressures. Yeah. We've never done it. We kept pushing it off, yeah. much no. like Henry James. So even if we got back to those numbers, the building still couldn't right. handle right. it. Correct. Right. Yeah. No, but I think that's a good point, it's recreating really that why a little bit and some of the maybe historical things we've exactly. even done over time. Yeah. And I think it's important. That's why even if, if you go home tonight and you didn't get all your questions out tonight, please be sure that you bring them back up to us because this is important That'll stuff. That'll help us frame, frame A lot the next of us have seen this multiple times, and um, anything anyone wants to. Any, everyone's voice needs to be heard on this because it's really important. Sharon, did you have something? Yeah, so so me being the newest person, and that's what I was going to ask about the community, So because ultimately that's where we're going. And how, when was this reviewed with the community from a standpoint of the depth 
of what you guys know? So the first, what we call the, the uh, current conditions, which was different than what you see tonight, which was really an assessment of our buildings. Mm -hmm. We held a public forum, uh, it was believed be beginning Early of June. 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 Okay. June. We are taking this information to the public forum next week. So we're advertising that now and trying to get a good turnout through uh, uh, the flyer that I sent to the board and- um, SCTV. Yep. Library. Yeah. <laughs> and the facility enrollment test work has public members on it that also brought their insight Right. So our hope is after that public forum, it will really give us some good direction on feedback what and help us define from. next steps in terms of conversations and what we need to do. And I would recommend so, if you're available to come to the public forum. Oh, I'm so going to be at all. Yeah, public, yeah. What they're saying. Yeah. Because that's only going to help, help us all better yes. understand where we should go. And it's at yeah. the library. It's at the library. library. Yeah. And if I could just say, and Matt's probably tired of hearing me say this, the one thing that that's comforts me though is if you look at. I mean, th th these are big dollars, right? And we're talking major, major Ooh, changes, change in this town, right? But if you look at the one of the first slides are about the, the buildings between 1954 and 1969, this town built five new schools, and the big ones: Tooton, Squadron, Latimer, Henry James, and Simsbury High School. So we've been here before, mm -hmm. and we can do it again. We just, again, it's about the education of the public. And, again, that and statement right there is a good one to add. To that's a good yeah. one. I think it's uh, one of the things that I didn't mention because we're in the middle of uh, hitting some questions, but I think it's important to note that the, the reason why this big, why the first step we picked was is that it affects everybody. You know, by doing the fifth and sixth grade or the sixth grade, there's a chance that that first project is going to have some amount of effect for every family in town who has a child. That's that. It, that's exactly. It's not playing favoritism. The way all these guys are getting something nice, and I have to wait for ten years. Right away. That's that's and that's the beauty of both schools, whether you do option one or option two. How do you make the? And I know down the road, and I know you're saying we can't because numbers could change all the time but really that slide on cost i think is really kind of it isn't really apples to apples because the long term if you're going to build three new schools or build four new schools with option one and just renovate or you know i just think that it's a little misleading that that cost dollar to, to comparison because they're not really a total impact of what we're talking about over the 20 years or 15 years or 10 years I don't think you can talk about that. I, I think the I first think numbers. I think the first numbers are really about: Are you moving the sixth grade up, or are you building a five-six school? And this is what that costs you. And we're too far away to talk about what the next one's going to be because we have to see what happens to the town over the course. But it's, it's easy enough to pull together. We're say we're gonna right, it's a question to be answered. School, but what about the other? That's all. Yeah. I just think it's Do we have to move a grade up, or we couldn't just like? move everybody from Latimer to all the other schools and then redo Latimer? There's not enough. There's not no. enough. No. no, there's not enough capacity. No. 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 That was an option we did look at. Okay. And one of the th pieces we haven't gotten to... <laughs> to <laughs> just lost Neil. Um, we haven't gotten too far in tonight is that as we've gone through the groups, particularly the, the educators' lens on this, was that at least sixth grade at a minimum, we need to really think about a different experience for our upper elementary students than we've, we've been giving them um, with an opportunity to really get more rigor, more option, more content specific. A lot of things, social emotional sports, you can do differently with that grade level of six or five, six together. And there's an efficiency aspect to that as well. We're gonna have to discuss down the road when you, when you staff, you know, and you put all of one grade level in a place or two grade levels in a place, and you don't have to look much further than to see how Squadron Line is staffed as opposed to how Terrible. either uh, Central or Terrafo is staffed. Hmm. But will they have anyone at that general meeting to talk about, like the sixth grade movie is a huge idea, and I think it's something that I think people could really get behind. I mean, because that's like the information. Really help. That's good so point. will there be anybody to say why that's a really big why too is right. the sixth grade so so that. our thought on this for this forum is to present the options and then have a panel 
and be able to talk to some of those specific things. So Aaron and I would speak to the educational, the curricular component of that. Um, the, the challenge is it's how much you're talking about what bucket because there's so much to discuss, you know? So it's almost like think about the model, but yeah, good point. You know what I'm going to add to? I think it might be to give him a global perspective, which is this is a new phenomena for this town. We've, we have um, redistricted in the past. And, multiple times. And multiple times. Yes, thank you. We have. But I think also we mentioned South Windsor, and I think maybe doing a complete analysis of towns and why they have that are in predicaments and situation like ours, why they have moved to that. I think you need to also see what is going around in surrounding districts around the state. This is not just something that is unique to this district, but this is happening as we speak and has been happening. And I think maybe having like the, the you know, the, the cost benefit analysis also, you know, where why they got to where they are, which is probably in the same situation that we are now in the predicament that, or not predicament, in the situation that we are now. So I think if you put a little bit of a global piece on that of other districts, it gives, it gives, townspeople and parents something to also compare with mm -hmm. with what is going on in other districts not too far from us mm -hmm. good point it's easy to do mm -hmm. yeah south windsor is a good example yeah. yep. size community, same, similar aging size buildings. Community, yeah. right. similar sort of uh, need kind of driving things and also that multiple phased approach to things right. there are time frame was maybe a little more aggressive than what we were showing right. obviously but Ellington where are they in there um, yeah. where are they in the plan right now they are on their last going to referendum to approve their last build so it's the 10th year of the plan and it'll be completed yeah, probably a phases, year 13 four phases mm -hmm. they did run into a demographic <coughs> issue where as I said before the plan was a 350 student school and it's now going to be 680 so they still have to figure out a way you know to have those community conversations mm -hmm. to move that through because the price tag is very different mm -hmm. um, but we've been looking at a lot of their materials how they set up yeah, their okay. website how they've communicated so it's it's a, a very good place to reference i think yeah point. Hey, I, back to my favorite slide. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, i actually ended up figuring out I, I was having problems i was having a problem with yeah, the numbers sorry, we answered a little, I, I answered a little <laughs> I was having a problem with the numbers, and, and I, I think it might be helpful to illustrate when you're showing this, uh, is that um, Henry James 7-8 is missing from, from these. I know it doesn't change, but I started adding up the numbers, and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, how do I have 2,900 projected students, but only 2,300 spaces? And that's because the 7 and 8 isn't in option one. But it's down here in option two as six to eight. The same, yeah. it, it, it just show them all, show them both, and then total them so that ah, I people. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This way, in, even if you continuity, line, if, if you lined it up, you can actually see you yep. know yep. how many people are going to be at the at the middle school or in the middle school campus versus gotcha. versus mm -hmm. now. Continuity yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Did, did you look at other? I don't even know if there are other sites in town. If you're building new, why is it on the same site as where a school is now? Is it just the land is there, or I mean? Yeah, I almost touched that third rail the other meeting where <laughs> there's a lot of open. Can I ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> um, I said open space, and I got some looks. But um, so we did look at um, we did look at town-owned property in, in general terms. There's a it's just pretty good current map of um, of town-owned properties and what was dedicated to open space and other uses. So yeah, so it was easy to eliminate a lot of the already owned properties um, for other uses and then when once you start talking about buying private land it just doesn't become financially feasible so the other piece where Henry James is a little bit more attractive and you know we're not pushing for it but the the utilities are there so okay. water sewers things like that when you start to dig a little deeper there's some pretty good benefits there that um, make sense more than other sites so I just figured yeah. the population density is different now than it was in sure. 1913 when nope. the first one was born yeah that's hard for hard to 
for people to understand is the capacity too. Yep. And really with the exception of Central, which is really in the, the best shape and probably the, the strongest candidate for actually being renovated as opposed yep. to a new building, all the other sites actually have sufficient space to construct yeah. a new school and leave the existing one fully operational until the new one is built. So space really wasn't an issue and you know, people are already coming there, they're used to it. As Jeff said, the site and the utilities are there. Seem fairly natural to, to continue to use them. I think too from an educational standpoint, um, transitions as well, putting a campus-like atmosphere and having the opportunity to share staffing, oversight of um, various departments, content areas, um, seems much more powerful if you're on one campus um, in order to be able to do that. As long as it doesn't feel, end up feeling like two two-year schools, yeah. you know? Yeah, right. yeah. That's right. not yeah. Right. That happen. Right, right. That's really key. Mm -hmm. And that was right. a lot of why the alive you saw the alignment of the two buildings together right. uh, to try and to make that a and an outdoor walkway is not the same thing right. Right. Winter. No. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you, you i'm telling you you shouldn't even be saying that stuff because yeah. if, if you're doing it if it's if, it, if we're talking about this continuity we're talking about right. sharing resources and stuff we are not going to get a teacher to walk from seventh grade to eighth grade in an open walkway we do, aren't in california sixth grade to eighth grade <laughs> so, yeah. you know what i mean Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> they might get Sorry. from seventh grade to eighth grade, but I'm not sure. He's, he's from the problem. I wasn't going to say anything. It's the problem of growing up in the south and going to college. I'm telling you, it's so much easier. <laughs> so much easier. You have lockers outside. <laughs> they really do. do. I mean, outside yeah. of the buildings. I've seen them. We don't have that so much. <laughs> um, anyone else have anything else they want to add? So, you know, with being on what, just tagging on what Jennifer said, the a new lower academy in the state several districts have done this mm. and they've called it whatever they have or two schools combined in one or, or what have you that might be also a good um slide to show a comparison sure. in some mm -hmm. of the districts around the state that have gone in that model to maybe reassure residents and parents that this this was built in this district at this mm. time and sure. what it looks like visuals and and educational and building and just to give them an idea of what does that really mean we talk about you know a, a new academy in in a district i mean we even go to academies now we don't even call them schools but i think that's something that that's a good a good point to to show them sure. i think in the other also in going back to one of the maps or what have you you mentioned about that there is space on the existing schools i.e latimer you know two building mm -hmm. school I think it's also a good idea to show them maybe a, a visual map sure. of where exactly, you know, is yep. it going to be built on the upper fields? Is it going to be built to lower? You can take over a parking yeah, place. They have all so, that. It's all, all that. those we exist. All right they all they exist. Are, it was just a matter of what we're. Didn't want to show but, too much. Yeah, and, and just to really reiterate I think, that. And I think yeah. Simsbury were schools. I mean, I don't think we're going to call anything an academy. <laughs> I just don't. I don't feel like Simsbury is that kind of a. Jeff and I were just saying. Town. You can't go to five we're six schools. academy and then no. only James School. Yeah, we're at schools. I don't. I don't think. I mean, I know they've done it, and I think I mentioning right. them in other areas is fine. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Simsbury needs to be a school. Sorry. Well, that's, my that's, where, that, that's that's weed stuff. I'm, 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 I understand. I do think I your point is well. To a slide on showing what other school, what, what other districts are doing for sure. Be yeah. great. Districts would be really helps, good. What they've done. To, helps just, to just to kind of give an idea. And seeing their success. Well, well it, help, it helps right. eliminate right. this idea that we're doing some sort of new yep. radical this is not, idea. Not, yeah. With yeah. no foundation. Yeah. This is and about yeah. as old that's as it is. That's but that's I think all. just for those that have, you know, that yeah. that do not have a concept, like what does that mean? You know, even like, what do you mean by a middle, lower middle academy? Right. We is it working or is it not? Right. And we're going to continue to call them schools, but just what does that exactly mean? You know, look like. Look at that. I think that's a good point. Very helpful. Anyone else? Kayla? <laughs> Kayla is going to be so long Kayla. gone. <laughs> she is going to be rocking the world somewhere, doing something special. <laughs> yeah, Thursday night. Yeah. Will you come back and check in? <laughs> Kayla, would you have wanted to go to a 5 6 school? Would that have interested you? I mean, a lot of my friends from like other states and other towns have like. Their middle school is six, seven, eight yes. instead of just the five or the seven, eight. So, I think it'd be interesting. It like acclimate them a little more to the climate, and I don't know, get them more prepared. I think. Think. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. I think it's an excellent thought. Excellent answer. Good thought. 
Great. student populations go in cycles. I mean, we, you know, when my kids were at Squadron, a lot of kids there. Yeah, I mean, uh, is that is that a typical cycle? I mean, are we gonna you, at the end of these these oh. plans, and all of a sudden we're back down at the <laughs> bottom of a cycle, and everyone says, "Oh, what, what, what did we do?" <laughs> well, that's what okay, South Windsor. They're saying South Windsor did that, and they're like they're booming bigger than they thought. Oh, by the way, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, but but that's what this plan has because you could go from three or four elementary schools. Right, so if it goes right. one way, you go with four. If it goes drastically another, you could. And that goes okay. to part. Okay. That goes to part two of the McBroom, Malone McBroom report because they're the ones who did the demographics, and that was right. like that. That was June was. And where just where, where we are? In right, I'll give you a little preview of that report because I just got it back. <laughs> um, where we are for the next couple of years is as that elementary goes up, that's the remaining of the high school coming down. Right. So our overall population of students in the school system is going to stay same. almost exactly same. the same, but it's going to be Even doing though. an elementary and high school thing mm -hmm. that um, is interesting to figure. Great yeah. toy. I loved it. All That's right. very helpful. You guys all set? And again, if you have any more questions, send them to Matt. Be happy to <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy to help you out. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much for all your time. Thanks. It's been a, it's it's a lot of information. Yeah. It's fun stuff though. It's Thank really you. good and um, see you on the twenty. Yeah. Right. Yes. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, now we're going into the quarterly budget analysis. Perfect. So um, in your packet, you have a detailed uh, report of our first quarter budget analysis. So just to frame this a little bit, the purpose of this report, it's really a snapshot in time to take a look at our current rate of spending, where we are at the end of first quarter, compare it to where we were last year. So good news is we're very consistent. with We're within 1% of that overall uh, spending. Uh, we always want to report out at that at this time of year. There's a couple just couple interesting points I wanted to bring your That's attention to they're really mean. enrollment related more than anything else and I know Neil's given quite a level of detail on our enrollment over the various meetings but our instruction account uh, our spending is up slightly compared to last year at this point that's our largest account that's where we house uh, our, our teacher salaries uh, as you'll remember we added a teacher late in the game at uh, Latimer Lane to adjust so the enrollment and we also added uh, some tutoring staff to support with our larger kindergarten uh, numbers we did that at several schools so we've made that adjust adjustment and it's led to a little bit of elevated spending um, there the other piece I wanted to two other pieces I wanted to draw your attention to the one just from an optic standpoint looks a little different on the report that's the uh, equipment um, new and replacement where we've already spent down the entirety of the hundred ninety eight thousand dollar budget um, it's the same as we did last year the reality there is several years ago I don't know if you recall this tight budget year we moved two hundred thousand dollars in equipment from operating onto one of our large grants we spend down the operating dollars first we still have the two hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars that we're managing there as well so overall we're in good shape. It just looks a little different when, when you look at the spend down. We spend it down first from here. Um, the only other piece I really wanted to draw attention to was insurance and pension, which is another very large driver for us. Um, last year in our conversations with Board of Finance during the budget process, uh, we talked a lot about that line item and kind of right-sizing that line item in the internal service fund. I don't want to get into too much detail on that. But we were going to allocate and we had the agreement of the Board of Finance, $300,000 from our non-lapsing fund to help offset the increases there, make them a little bit more manageable. Uh, we're favorable in insurance in our, in our projection up to this point of the year, so it looks like we'll only need to utilize $150,000 of that money. Uh, so what I'd like to do is take some of those funds, and we will be having conversation with the Board of Finance on that, and utilize them to get some short-term help uh, in Burke's absence to help manage the Henry James uh, project from an owner's rep standpoint. So I know we have the support to do that, um, but that's where those funds will not impact us from an operating standpoint, and we'll be in good shape. So I can certainly take any other questions, but that's a quick overview at this point in time. Anybody? Thank you very much. I know All right. getting this stuff together is important. Thank you for keeping up with it. Um, our next public audience, Mr. Kelly. 
All right. Um, moving on, our next board meeting <coughs> will be Tuesday, December 10th. We will also be having the tri meeting, and we will hear about the date of that on the third. Uh, by Thursday or Friday, we'll hear that it will either be the third or the fifth. And um, being that we don't have a meeting on the 26th, we can all go to the Century High School. There will be a football game versus Avon. <laughs> Route 44 our, Classic. To clinch our playoff That's berth, right. hopefully. To it's clinch our playoff part. berth, and um, it's senior night as well, I believe. It's our last home game. So, all that, I would take a motion. So move. To adjourn? Yeah. To adjourn. I make Any, a motion to adjourn. Anybody second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're out. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was good. A lot of good information. Yeah. 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 And I think that was important stuff that we heard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people here. What do you think about having our meetings?